Hi everyone, welcome to Torah On Demand. I'm Rabbi Yael Rydberg. Many years ago, my friend and colleague, Rabbi Avi Winokur taught me one of the most valuable lessons of Judaism. Whenever someone pushed back on the power of holiness that can be derived from Jewish living and learning, he would offer, never let your theology get in the way of your religion meaning static, simplistic images and understandings of God as a king on a throne, for example, or an omnipotent or omniscient being who knows us personally and therefore rewards and punishes our behavior, well, they don't have to prevent the deep engagement and meaning-making derived from Jewish living. Parashat Bechukotai raises one of the most challenging questions of the Torah in this vein. Is there just reward or punishment for our actions and its corollary, is it possible to follow God's laws even if one isn't sure about the who, the what, the why of God? The text opens with a very clear framework of ancient Israelite religion. Im bechukotai telechu ve'et mitzvotai tishmoru. If you follow my laws and if you keep my commandments and do them, I will grant rains in their season. But if you don't observe my commandments, I will make your skies like iron and your earth like copper. The portion plainly asserts that our actions have consequences. We shall be rewarded for following the commandments and punished if we do not. When we follow ritual, when we participate in community, when we interpret and study and value our history, we are granted that feeling of being part of something larger than ourselves. And yet in the book of Ecclesiastes, there seems to be the opposite understanding. From the text, I further observed under the sun that the race is not won by the swift, nor the battle by the valiant, nor is bread won by the wise, nor wealth by the intelligent, nor favor by the learned, for the time of mischance comes to all. In other words, you can't take it with you. But even without the theological proposition as to the source of the blessings and curses based on our behavior, or the inevitability that we will all have to face the difficult experiences that life deals to humankind, all we have at the end of the day is the example of our own life, and we are responsible for how we live it. The rabbis seem to embrace this paradox in the Mishnah in Ethics of the Sages. Ben Azai says, run to do an easy commandment as to do a difficult one and flee from sin, since a commandment leads to another commandment and a sin leads to another sin, since the reward for a commandment is another commandment and the reward for a sin is another sin. When we try then to be the best person we can be, when we seek blessings and offer gratitude, the actions themselves are rewards to be cherished. When we are arrogant, self-absorbed, ungrateful, well, the punishments are meted out by a lack of friends, perhaps an unsuc unsuccessful business, perhaps weak family ties and a lonely existence. God has nothing to do with either course of action, but when we make the choice to head down one path or another, there are blessings and curses that will surely follow. It's not a sure thing, of course. Bad things happen to very good people and very bad people seem to live charmed lives. But I prefer to seek strength and security knowing that there will come times of weakness and instability rather than to just give up. The Haftarah from the prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah this week picks up this exact theme. He teaches that the person who trusts in some sense of the holy, whether it's with a W or just an H, holy or holy, who is connected beyond the self, that person is likened to a tree planted by the water whose roots are saturated and whose leaves are fresh. The person who relies on no one or nothing but herself is like a bush in the desert, scorched and barren. I'm not disturbed by the framework of reward and punishment in the Torah. I know our actions have consequences. I think when we walk in ways that seek righteousness and peace, we can be rewarded with our own sense of self, even if we can't quite find righteousness and can't quite identify peace. When we strive towards uprightness, we are more likely to find ourselves rooted more firmly in the ground. I experience reward and even holiness from that groundedness, from that feeling secure enough and trusting enough to keep walking and following and challenging and questioning and celebrating life. Shabbat Shalom. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.